Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we're here and we've just finished this one up. So we have the repeat. Let's go next, number five. Nothing new, no material. So this is um, going to be, you must show me successful completion of number five. You have to do number five on your own successfully without any mistakes in order to get credit for the class. In other words, to get credit for this portion of the class. Number six has a new concept, and I've already written the code for it. Instead of taking your time up, I've already written the code for it. So we do the repeat, just like we've learned before. If we come to a point where the path goes to the left, now we have straight, left turn, straight, left turn, so forth, to get to the end. If the path turns to the left, turn left. Uh, otherwise, if if it, it's either for, if you can move forward, or even if it turns to the left, once you've turned left, you can move forward. So you always move forward. And if we run this, it should work just fine. There it goes. Okay, and here's the JavaScript code. You can just select, copy, and paste as text, by the way. And I did that in my Word document. I put it in my Word document, uh, and, and here it is, right here. So we start out much like we did before with other programs in our flow charting. If path turns to the left is true, we turn left. So we have decisions can have two branches coming out. You're branching. You are making a decision. You're branching. So it can have more than one branch. You can split it up. Here we have a second if statement uh, inside the loop. So you can put, you can nest these as many levels as you need. So if path turns left, then you turn left. If path turns left, then you turn left. Otherwise, you, uh, otherwise, and if it doesn't turn left, you move forward. Even if you do turn left, you still move forward. You always do a move forward. And then this concludes the while portion, the while block. You go back to the beginning of the while block and then keep going. So, and then you to retest the while block. If it's true, you do it again. If not, you end the program. Okay, that's the flow charting. We don't do as much flow charting as we used to because you can read the structure of a flow chart here and here. So this is indented and you'll notice we have this branch going to the right so this decision is indented in a flow chart. It's just we have a bunch of symbols surrounding the words. And then this indentation tells us, well, we're inside. We're at another level. We're another level deeper. Again, an indent to the right. And then when we stop the indent, that means that's the end of the block. Then we move forward. And we stop the indentation. That means we're at the end of that block, whatever block this indent refers to. There we go. There's the indentation, ends the while statement. Things are lined up. The W is lined up over this curly bracket. So you know that this is one whole block from here to here. Some programs will highlight this for you. This is the end. This lines up right under the if. So right under the I, so you know that this is one whole block. 
that's how we structure programs. It's called structured programming. It was the step before object-oriented programming. And it was very powerful. C is a structured program. A Fortran and BASIC were not. C was a big step forward in computing when it came out. Because people could start making really big programs that were difficult to do in BASIC and Fortran. C++ is object-oriented. That's the distinction between C and C++. Okay, let's move on. Go back to Blockly. We're going to say, okay. Uh, number six is a new concept. Number seven, uh, this is a do on your own. And again, number seven, you must pass seven or eight. So we've got uh, number five, seven or eight. These are considered your exams. Five and seven or eight. No new concepts. Take what you learned. Now figure out how to solve this problem. Okay, so now we're up to number nine. You must either do nine or ten also. Seven or eight, nine or ten. But I'm giving you the start of number nine. So the repeat is like we've had before. A new structure, it's called an if do else, also known as an if then else. Some languages, MATLAB included, has an else if. So you can just keep stringing this together. You can have as many branches as you need coming out of one if statement. But right now, we just have two separate branches. If we have this one we learned before, if something is true, then do this. But you didn't have an alternative. If it's false, what do you do? Now we have a structure if this is not true, we'll do something different. In this structure, if it was true, you did this, and then you, all, everybody did what followed. Now we can make logic where if this is true, then we do one thing. If it's not true, we do something else. And then everything does what follows. And what follows, this may be unique. The else part may be unique. Only that branch will do it. Nothing else will. And the, the uh, true part, only this branch will do it. Nothing else will. Okay. So this will not succeed. You need to finish it up. And I'm not saying it's right either, by the way. And I'm going to get rid of this block. This one, or, yeah. Let's delete the move forward. So I'm saying if there, if it's clear ahead, you can move forward. Otherwise, turn left. So this may actually work. Let's give it a try, though. Oh my gosh, it works. <laughs> there is a more complicated way to do it though too. Let's go look at the flow chart for the if then else. Okay, here's the code and the flow chart for this stuff. The code over here. And it selects the portions of the flow chart that are attached to it. So you see lots of things selected. Um, okay, starts out the same as we did before, if part. So we have two branches. This time, the difference is if something's false, we do something. We do a process. If it's true, it's just like it worked before. If it's false, we do a process. Then we end the while block 
we go back and do it again until we're done okay part 10 then part 10 I will warn you is tough and we're getting there okay so note the hint try following the left hand wall if you can do this you successfully understand this lo logic of how to do ifs and how to do repeats okay that's it for today and that's it for the mazes so we're done with mazes this will be due uh, the second Sunday after class starts okay and we'll go on to the next section after this